we have product and amount. Right now, we want the top value. So here we see products and the largest value. But if I change this to 2, I need the values to spill to the side, showing me top 2. If I change this to 3, everything updates. Now we'll see two ways to solve this, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 method, and then an old school method. Now you can think of this in two parts. We need to pick out just the amounts for a particular product, and then find the nth largest values. Well, we can use the amazing filter dynamic array function. For array, those are the values we actually want to spill. There's the full amount column comma, and I want to include from the product column only values that are equal to whatever the product name is. Now close parentheses, if I hit F9, filter delivers only the values for that particular product. Now we need to pick from amongst all of these values the two largest values, Control Z. Well, the perfect function for that is the large function. The array, those are all the values, comma, the K. Well, we could put 1, that would get the max, or 2, that would get the second biggest. But if we use array syntax in curly brackets, 1, comma, 2, curly brackets, that means in K I'm asking simultaneously for the first and second biggest value. Now, it's important that we have a comma because we want them to spill across the columns. If we had a semicolon, it would spill down across the rows. Now, this hard codes it in, but for the time being, I close parentheses, and that's it. Now, what we want is to link it to that cell, so F2, and we'll use another amazing Office 365 function, sequence. Now, it can generate that 1, comma, 2, and we don't want it across rows, so comma. We want it across columns. Now, I've already named this cell top. The start and the step will assume 1 in both cases, so that's all we need. If we highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see we get exactly what we need, 1, 2. That tells the large function to spill the largest two values across the columns. Close parentheses and Enter. If I come up and change this to 3, that is amazing. Now, this is a spilled array. The formula lives in the first cell, but all the subsequent cells, the values are just spilling there. So all we have to do is click and drag, go to the last cell, F2, and everything's looking good. Now, if you don't have Microsoft 365, there's an old school formula for this. And in array, rather than using filter, we'll do a direct array operation. We ask the question of the product column, are any of you equal to whatever the product is, close parentheses. Now, we're going to have to lock this using table formula nomenclature. And that's how you lock a column with table formula nomenclature. Now, if we were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, it gives us an array of trues and falses, Control-Z. We multiply that by the amount column. If we F9 that. Now we see where there was a false, we get a 0. And where there's a true, we get our value. Control-Z, we have to lock this too. And the condition for product has to be locked as it goes across the columns, but not when we copy it down. So we hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Notice, that's a lot of work that the spilled arrays don't require. All right, comma, the K. Since we're copying the formula to the side, we need a formula number incrementer that will give us 1, 2, 3, and so on as we copy to the side. Well, of course, we use the columns. And we're sitting in F14. So we lock the column reference F14 colon. And don't lock the second column reference. That way, columns will count how many columns there are. F to F is 1. But when we copy it to the side, that will move to G, and that will be 2. And that's our formula. Close parentheses. Oh, but there's more. These are direct array operations. And if you don't have Microsoft 365, you have to tell Excel that this is an array formula, and they have to be calculated as arrays. And the way you do that? is with the keystroke, Control-Shift-Enter. 
you immediately go up to the formula bar and verify that those curly brackets are put in. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you it understood that this is an array formula and calculated it as such. Now we copy to the side and then copy down. I'm going to go to the diagonally furthest one away and hit F2. I want to verify that all the cell references and ranges are working, and they are. Now, what happens if we change this to 2? Well, look at the magic of spilled arrays. It just disappeared, but not here. That means if we want it to disappear, F2, we have to use columns again, Control C, and use the if function. So if, the logical test, I'm going to say, hey, number incrementer, please tell me when you're greater than whatever our top value is. If we're past that top value, then value if true, double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for the formula to show nothing. Otherwise, our formula is the value if false. Close parentheses. And I have to remember to do Control Shift Enter again. Copy it to the side. Copy it down. Now if I come up here and say 3, now they're both working. 4, Control Enter. And they're updating. Now notice that there's a tie for the third value. I think most of the time when you're extracting top three, you probably don't want to see that. But if you did want to see it, for example, four here for top three, but three here, we'd have to look up for each one of these products, whatever the actual value is for the third biggest, and then extract the values that are greater than or equal to that. Well, we could do that, but we'd first have to extract the third biggest value for each product. That formula would be the same as we just did, but instead of an array of items, we just put the top value. That extracts the third value. And then our formula would be filter with two conditions, equal to the product and greater than or equal to the hurdle. Then we would sort. And then because the original table inside a filter is vertical down across the rows, we have to transpose to display them horizontally. But that gives us what we want. If there are ties, it'll show them. For the old school formula, that's the same as we did just a moment ago, except for we have only the third value. We have to enter that with Control-Shift-Enter. And our extract formula would actually be the same formula. We just have to have a different logical test. We can't compare our columns 1, 2, 3, number incrementer to the top number. We need to directly compare it to the count of however many values there are, including ties. Right now, with 3, we get in the first row 4 values, in the second row 3 values. But if we change it to 2, there are no ties. So only the top two values are extracted. All right, so the moral of the story, of course, is all of us have to get Microsoft or Office 365 as soon as possible because these dynamic array formulas and the new Excel engine make everything easier. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about old school or new school array formulas, check out these playlists with lots of videos.